this is, uh, so I thought I would write the paper, you know, uh, so my, yeah, remember I told you it was time, I couldn't read, right? 37 years old. Right, so I said, well, I don't like using the Dr. Fields paperwork, the, 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 the hypothesis, the, uh, you know, studies they have and all that. You know, sometimes they don't really understand us. They kind of write some stuff. I don't really write anything, but they, you know, it's like, so this paper says, one is too many and a thousand is never enough. It says, this statement is a statement that is known to come from and derived from many drug addiction recovery based programs, like I call it anonymous, you know, kind of anonymous food, anonymous cocaine, anonymous gamblers, anonymous, and sex anonymous. These substances don't stop at the front door of chemical drug substances. They also include things like people, relationships, and abusive behavior towards others and our desired choices to want more, ask your, to want more. Ask yourself a question, number one says, have you ever found yourself struggling in a relationship and you believe the struggle forced you to get into multiple relationships to try and fix yourself in your problem, and you learn later that one is too many and a thousand is never enough. Now, is that kind of confusing? You need a breakdown, it's right? Not, it's not confusing at all. Okay, so yeah, what we do, what I've done, what others, others, millions of others have done, let's say even me and her ain't getting along, right? But she's saying I ain't shit. She said I smell like goat smell. Right? And tell my daddy ain't shit. I ain't gonna talk about my daddy. Only I talk about my daddy. Right? And, and then, you know, it just went bad. And then, um, so many times what I've done, I go get somebody else. Right? And then when I get somebody else, that ain't really the hit. Right? That's just something that carried me through the first night. Because I'm tripping. Right? I'm thinking about what she's doing with Big Fred and then I go get somebody else. I'm back at the club, looking, searching, right? I go in the neighborhood. Now, I don't want to do this. Well, I'm not really saying me, but I'm just saying me and you and you and me and us. You know, we might go and say, uh, that's one of them, hmm, crackheads, right? But she ain't looking too bad, you know? So we just want to get a little something from her, hit that. You know, maybe even don't want to really spend it, spend on the wrong. Take it to the bushes, right? Behind the house of grandma's house, right? Hit that. But we doing and, and and like that one we got wasn't the one, and so we trying to get a thousand of them, and it still ain't the one. That don't really fix us. We think a partner, a sex partner a certain something fixes us. Some of us think buying hella cars is gonna fix you. Some of us think go to shopping is gonna fix you. Yeah, you cool for a minute, right? And buy all these certain kind of outfits. You ain't went nowhere, so no, no. And bought a couple of suits. So I guess the farthest you go, some of us, we put the damn suit on and go to the corner and hang out. <laughs> like, y'all, where you going, man? I ain't going nowhere, man. I just felt like getting dressed. <laughs> so, all right, number two, it says, um, when it comes to you seeking and searching to find, uh, uh, find wholeness in your relationships, do you believe the sum of many parts and many partners are more wholly fulfilling than the sum of one part and one partner, right? The sum of many parts, I mean, yeah. It says, when it comes to seeking and searching for to find wholeness, a whole pie, a whole person, in your relationship, do you believe the sum of many parts, many bras, many hookups, many hookups, Many prostitutes, many hoes, uh, partners are more holy and fulfilling than the sum of one part and one partner, right? Sometimes we believe that I gotta be a Mac, right? I think part of being a Mac has a lot to do with what you believe people think about you. 
most people that have several uh, females seem to always want to go show their partners that they got a new one. I, 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 what is, why, it, it seems like that's part of it. You know, it's not just, uh, I'm just going to get with her and get with her and everybody, nobody's going to know I'm with her and her and her. Some of us have this show off spirit that we want to bring and show these dudes that I'm just as good as y'all, better than y'all. See why I got this one? And they say, oh, Jerry was, oh, Jerry had a bad one last night. They're cheering for us in a sense, so we think. Right? But I don't know, man. I, I think, I heard this guy say, this is Dr. What is this? Umar Johnson. He, Umar Johnson. He was on uh, a movie film thing they call Hidden Colors, right? Documentary kind of stuff. You gotta watch it. So Dr. Umar said that a lot of males, right? Uh, minority males, Spanish. Uh, African American. He said a lot of males, he believes a lot of males need three to four partners, right? He said they seek that out in their nature. He said, but one of the reasons he believes they do it or we do it, it has a lot to do with not finding everything in one person, right? He said, you have her that's beautiful. Nice feet and everything, no rust on her ankles, right? She's nice looking, but she's not really that smart upstairs. Nobody's home, you know, nobody's home upstairs. Like home alone, nobody's home, right? Then you got her over there. She knows how to do almost all kinds of stuff. You know, she's not all that on the looks, but she can help you do a lot of stuff. Right? Then you got different ones. You got her, she has a nice out of this world body. And the sex is great, right? But you know, so he was saying that he believes that the doctor believes that if you can get all that in one, you wouldn't even cheat on your girl. Right? Now I believe that that could be slightly true, right? I'm trying not to raise my stakes too too high now. Mostly now I'm like, what work do I need to do on me? Can't depend on them to do everything. I gotta be a, a, contend, a contender inside the running, right? Can't put it all on them. I had some young guys a few years ago, they telling me they're pimps and players. Man, I just said that. I just moved. I said, you okay, you said, I said, you hype, man. You real hype, young blood. Man, yeah, man, you know, I just said that, man, I'm up here. Yeah. I said, wow. I said, I want to know one thing, which you switch off smart asses. They said, what? I said, if God was to take those females away from you for nine to 10 to 18 months, no female at all, tell me who the hell would you be when they're not around? Because you're talking about them. And I have not heard one thing about the value in you. I said, why are you so motherfucking quiet? We talk, talk, oh, right? It's all you I said, build, build on you, man, because that's great to have a good girl. You know, but I've had a, a girlfriend that died. She was a great woman, she died. She died, man, that's a hit. You know, and, and you just don't want to just be speaking just about things outside. You can have some of the best friends in the world, but that don't mean that what they doing is what you got going on. You just an associate. You know, when you gonna build on the prize that God made in you. So anyway, I think we're on three. Uh, it says, when it comes to most of your unhealthy, abusive relationships that you continue to pick and choose to commit to, are you learning that one is too many and a thousand is never enough? Yeah, I mean, because sometimes we pick the same pick. We bring the same us to that pick. You know, I mean, it don't take some of us long. 
I had a class the other day we talked about domestic reasons and domestic season. It's Christmas time. Every year around this time, some of us, not saying anybody here or pointing any toes at anybody, but some of us every year around Christmas Eve, we whoop some female's ass. We kick that ass, right? I mean, we got straight shit on the front of our shit, right? Put the foot way up in it. Bam! It's New Year's Eve, right? Then it's, it's, it's a psychological thing, right? It's not normal. Some of us just like, and believe like, I, I'm seeing it. In, in order, in new relationships, a few months in, a couple of weeks in, violence takes place. No matter if the person did something bad or not. We must ask ourselves, do I have that problem? Am I one of the guilty parties in that? Right? But I even here to say that that doesn't show brain power when we go like this. That's not brain power. That's weak power. Right? They're going to irritate you. I'm going to irritate you. Right? But just because, and I'm glad, you know, I haven't got beat up since I've been here 19 years. But you don't have to go there, you know? And you can't force nobody to be with you. And one friend of mine told me this. He says, sometimes you have to eat by yourself. Sometimes you have to eat by yourself. What does that mean, James? I mean, sometimes you got to sit at the damn table with your food, your plate of food, and eat by yourself. Are you okay with eating by yourself? Are you okay with your own company or being in your own company? Some of us are not okay with that because we are in the room with a killer. You know, just think to be in your room by yourself with the killer. You, you might kill you. You might do something to yourself. You start sticking yourself with pins. Ain't no real pen, so you get a, a writing pen that you sign in with. And you just stick yourself. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's the lack of love. Love yourself. Put the pins in. Don't do it. Right? You're worthy. You're worth it. You're worth living. So, uh, four, when you look at, when you look at and do an overview of your violent behavior, do you now see and believe that one violent outburst or one headshot is too many and a thousand shots is never enough to balance a healthy, loving relationship and keep it together. You know, I mean, like you just said, well, I only hit it once, you know? I mean, I only had a crazy outburst once, but one is too many and it comes to be a thousand is never enough. It's not going to fix anything acting insane. You know, you're going to mess around. Men die early too, you know, in our groups and stuff. We can sit and have a goddamn aneurysm or a heart attack. You know, ain't nobody there to save you. You done cussed her ass out. You done broke her uh, uh, stiletto over her head. And then uh, you, you, uh, you, you oh, we have a major heart attack. You think you know what else you? You know, oh, baby, I love you. I don't mind with another one. And she's just like, you know what? We're going to have this one. I'm not just, uh, uh, no mouth to mouth. I'm not doing none of that. No sex. Uh, <laughs> bye. I got the life insurance on you, so don't get up out of here. So, number five. How many licks and how many violent hits does it take to catch 52 weeks of domestic violence class? How many licks and how many violent hits does it take we get 52 weeks. Do you guys know the answer to that? What? What? Right? Matter of fact, they it come up with it. It don't even have to be one. It doesn't have to be one. Don't make me knock your ass out. Right? That's right there. Yeah. yeah. Don't make me. And then you don't even see that. Don't make me come over there. Now, what they defined is, did he put you in fear? When he said, don't make him come. He said, yeah, I was really scared. because He has a reputation. So they got it on the thing. He said, don't make me come over there. He could have meant, don't make me come over there and clean that bathtub for you, since you can't do it right. 
I mean, it could be, you have to really be careful what you say. I've learned and know for a fact this, Texas, that's more dangerous than what you said on the phone. Because what you said on the phone is not necessarily recorded. But when you send a text and it came from your phone, that phone was in your name, on the threat that you're going to do X, Y, and Z, now they turn that text into what they call terrorist threat. Which is kind of worse than beating somebody up, physically either. What? Oh yeah, you got a background of all those other cases. And when you did this, now they're talking about uh, 15, 85, 15, 15 what? 15 days? No, 15 years. 15 years to think about what I say? Can I go to a, a, do some volunteer work on the freeway, Your Honor? No. You go to prison. You can walk around the yard. So, number six. Are you or is anybody here known to be attracted to the one is too many and a thousand is never enough sick behavior type of relationships that's known to have you doing 52 weeks of domestic violence classes? If not, why are you here? If you're not attracted to that type, if you're not attracted to the crazy retarded type, we like retarded girls. You know retarded girls, when they have a little extra medicine or when they have a lack of medicine, they scream a certain way when, you know, when they ain't had their pills. So when you have sex with them and you've had, you know what I'm saying, I don't know some of the names of the alcohol y'all be drinking, you know, the, um, margaritas and other stuff, right? Uh, but when you had you a couple of stiff ones, a couple of shots, and you got crazy over here, you know you're going to have a crazy good time. When you leave the club, we seem to want to go over crazy house just to hear a yell or scream. I don't know if you got the recorders on, right? Because if it's that exciting. But you know it's dangerous, right? Just to go over there. You know it's messy over there. They don't really clean up. There's hella clothes everywhere, right? You can just bam, bend her, bend her a certain way, put her in the boss and grab, right? Just get crazy. I don't know what it is about us and that crazy, right? Is the sex better to get crazy than the non crazy? Have we asked her? Okay, you can come back next week and answer that. But it's all right. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, number. Seven. seven. Okay, seven. When or before you caught your case, was the first drink drug, drink drug too much, or were you headed for the thousand drink or drug use that was never enough that is causing your life to hit a bottom? Right. Because um, sometimes some people can hit or have one, and that one is. They might not have another one for six months, right? But some of us cannot just have one drink. Once we get one, we need another one and another one and another one. Some of us are foolish enough to have different kind of drinks, right? White alcohol, brown alcohol, whatever alcohol, right? Some of us get so gone that all you would, all your homies. And they all got their own drink. And they sit in their cups down and all that. You know, and you get to that foolish stage and you picking their drink up, drinking theirs, and drinking theirs. And that's out of control. That's out of control. You're like, ain't you high already, stupid? Right? Ain't stupid high already? Why do you need to get higher? <laughs> I mean, you know, like, you have to ask yourself that. Why are you trying to do this? And then, when it comes to the other serious drugs, we seem to think we want to try stuff. They got all these different stuff out now. They got these different soaps and these different, uh, just this different shit, man. They selling stores and, and making drugs out of them. Why are we trying to escape? You know, this thing has gone back so many years back in the day, and they still do it, right? And I don't, hopefully you guys are not, I'm hoping I'm not working with some guys that have done it. But if you, I am, I'll do my best to hang with it. We get the paint spray and the plastic bag and you spray it in there. 
and you put it on your nose. Why would you want to breathe this man? <laughs> I mean, just look at the block. Yeah, ain't got no money. I mean, you know, why? Like, it was, they, they stupid. I just go to the store and, you know, go in the paint store with my bag and squirt a little colors in there and breathe different chemical colors. You know, I'll get me some candy paint and spray it in there. And it just, right? Really messing your brain up. Now we say love, right? You ever heard of love? In the Bible it says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and believe all mystery and all knowledge, but have not love, I am nothing. Love conquers all and is strong. Love does not envy. Love 